PVE server-based games are like a group of pets that need careful attention, and they cannot be managed through Kubernetes native workloads such as deployment or stateful set. If we don't use Kubernetes native workload, how can we leverage Kubernetes orchestration capabilities to manage thousands of game servers? Is there a design that can solve both of these problems simultaneously? Hello and welcome to this episode of Cloud Forward. Today, let's dive into the cloud-native landing of PVE server-based games based on OKG. Deploying PVE server-based games on Kubernetes often encounters a dilemma. Why is that? Let's look at the characteristics of PVE server-based games. Firstly, individual servers have a longer runtime and stopping the service should be avoided as much as possible to enhance the player's gaming experience. Secondly, there might be configuration differences during server startup. Thirdly, over time, different servers may have varying states, requiring directed management such as changing resource specifications, image versions, or directed server merging. Additionally, a single server container may have multiple processes, and the quality of server services needs to be defined by users. With these characteristics, it's easy to understand the challenges PVE server-based games face when landing on Kubernetes. For example, using Kubernetes native workload, fine-grained management of game servers is not possible. Specifically, using deployment management generates pods without a status identifier like a sequence number, making it impossible to perform stateful service discovery based on the sequence number. Additionally, it's challenging to differentiate the status differences between game servers and state loss occurs during unusual restarts with no automatic redirection for configuration or storage. If using stateful set management, although pods generated have sequence numbers as status identifiers, updates or deletions can only occur from a larger to a smaller sequence number, making it impossible to manage game servers in a directed way. It also cannot perceive the state differences between game servers. If not using Kubernetes native workload, leveraging Kubernetes orchestration capabilities to manage a large number of game servers is not possible. Specifically, using script programs for batch servers startup, which is an imperative approach, leads to complex operation and maintenance management and a high error rate. If using GitOps management, maintaining numerous YAML files with the same fields becomes complex, sometimes exceeding file length limits, making batch releases more complicated. If managed through a self-built PaaS platform, significantly development work is required, and there is a heavy coupling with business attributes, leading to complex subsequent iterations. How can these problems be avoided? Let's see how OKG achieves the cloud-native landing of PVE server-based games. Firstly, let's look at how OKG manages game server configurations. OKG provides the game server set CRD resources object, Game server managed by game server set has a sequence property and their names remain unchanged, similar to stateful set. Therefore, leveraging the feature, there are various ways to differentially manage game server configurations. Then, mount object storage. By using object storage, different configurations for different game servers are placed under path names after the game servers, ensuring a one-to-one -one corresponding between the bucket path and the game server, declared via PVC on game server set. Here you can see a schematic of the approach. The YAML example looks like this. With this approach, preparing the corresponding configurations for game servers and uploading them to appropriate bucket paths before stating the servers or adjusting replicas is sufficient. We can see that the contents of files in the directories game servers 0 and game servers 1 are different and will be mounted on corresponding game servers, game servers 0 and game servers 1. For dynamic fetching, if there is a configuration service center such as console or NACOS, the game server name, being fixed and unique, can be used. When a game server container starts, it sends a request to the configuration center with its name as a parameter to fetch the corresponding configuration. The method of obtaining the container's name is similar to mounting object storage, using the downward API to pass it to environmental variable. Now let's look at directed management of game servers. OKG's resource object game server set provides lifecycle management for game servers. Operation and maintenance teams can configure the lifecycle management methods by setting the game server lifecycle owner. There are two lifecycle management methods for game server which can be set in the field. 
game server set spec dot game server template dot owner. Method one, the owner is pod. Game server is created when the pod is created and deleted when the pod is deleted, consistent with the pod's life cycle. Method two, the owner is game server set. It is created before the pod is created and deleted after the pod is truly deleted. For example, when the game server is created, due to the failure of webhook variation, even though the pod is not generated, the game server will still be created. Another example, in cases where the game server is evicted due to anomalies, the pod is manually deleted, or there is a reconstruction and update, which constitutes a deletion action without changing replicas, the game server will not be deleted. In summary, method one is suitable for short-lived game servers with frequent startups and deletions requiring timely clearing of states, such as in some PvP session games. Method two is suitable for long-lived game servers like PvE games, where the game server state is recorded on the game server for an extended period, avoiding state loss. Let's consider scenarios where directed updates of game servers are necessary. For instances, in the game's canary or test environment, different regions corresponding to different images versions. Another example, SLG type games may have different gameplay copies in different regions corresponding to different images. A workload may have multiple versions of images and in such cases, specific game server image versions can be specified using the image field in game server.spec.specific containers. Additionally, when a game service updates its resource specifications in a directed way and there is a surge or loss of players over time, the computing resources in certain zones may not be able to meet the current demand. At this time, you can set the resource field in game server.spec.specification containers to specify the specific resource specifications of the game service. Another common scenario for directed management is game server merging operations. When game servers are merged, if players in a certain region decrease to a certain extent, requiring a merge operation, specific game servers need to be deleted. By setting reserve game service IDs and adjusting replicas, batch merging actions can be achieved. For example, if there are five game servers with IDs 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you want to delete game servers 2 and 3, then set reserve game servers to 2 and 3 and adjust replicas to 3. Additionally, setting the op state of the GS to kill can be used to quickly delete a game server. The difference between the two approaches lies in the fact that by default, a game server ID deleted through reserve game server ID will not reappear during the server startup. Only when manually removed from the reserve game server IDs during server startup will a game server be created with that ID. After learning about configuration management and directed management, OKG also provides an in-place hot updates functionality, supporting versioned management of hot update files, tracking update statuses, and supporting canary upgrades. Game services sometimes need to reduce the number of downtime updates, so they implement mechanisms for hot reload. For example, if a resource file or script file is updated, the game engine is reloaded and players won't feel it. However, after landing on cloud-native, containerized environments, is there an efficient way to achieve this? We know that a pod can have multiple containers inside, but upgrading any container will result in the entire pod being killed and rebuilt, which is a drawback of Kubernetes native. However, OKG achieves in-place upgrades, meaning that when updating a specific container, the entire pod's life cycle will not be affected. In the context of gaming, we can have a pod with two containers, one for the game engine for hot loading and another for resource files, script files and configuration file bundled into an image. Updating a specific image will not affect the entire pod. After being unaffected, the game engine side can load some dynamically changed files through OKG, achieving a more cloud native way of hot updates. OKG supports version management of hot update files, records the mapping between versions and the corresponding content, supports tracking update statuses, and facilitates canary upgrades. Especially when there is a need for canary updates, traditional hot updates mechanisms such as external storage cannot achieve version management, track update statuses, or perform canary upgrades. Still, OKG can overcome these limitations. Additionally, OKG provides multi-process state management functionality, addressing the situation of rich containers by allowing targeted user-defined manual or automatic operation and maintenance actions. In a service, 
there is a rich container state. When many gaming companies initially land on Kubernetes, they may not split the processes inside a pod finally, and they may not know the states of these processes. Therefore, gaming companies may not know whether these processes need to be split, whether delays will increase if they are split, and whether this is acceptable. With OKG, other traditional PVE game servers are containerized. They exist in a rich container form with a pod, where multiple processes are managed uniformly. Fine-grained perception of process-level states can be achieved, and targeted fault handling can be performed. Users can expose unusual process states to the Kubernetes game server CR through custom service quality. And for custom service quality states, management can be performed through an observable system. There are two methods, through kube event event alerts, notifying operation and maintenance teams to manually perform fault recovery, or through OKG's fault service recovery function, setting commands or scripts to be executed when a certain state occurs. This is the design solution for landing PVE games on OKG that I share with you today. If you are keen to know more about Alibaba Cloud, Cloud Native Game Solution, click the link in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos of Cloud Forward in the future. Until next time.